Now it's time to take apart the ignition system. So the only thing I need from this motor is the main, I don't know, transom clamp stern bracket assembly. It still works on this motor and the one I'm taking apart and fixing up, it's quite rusted. Now, you would think to yourself, well, just fix up this motor. Problem is when I go through a motor, I strip it all down, I sandblast it. I sandblast, I strip it down by sandblasting it, sorry. Primer it, paint it, put it all back together. I've already done everything, I just need the CERN brackets. So what I'll probably wind up doing here is taking the uh, parts I don't need off, trying to sell them, use that to recoup some of the money. Some of my do. Anywho, so in the interest of science, I'm gonna go ahead and check out the ignition system here. Let's see what she's like. Plugs, not too bad. So what I have is a spark tester. Well, let me show you. That's the spark tester. That's a little adapter. So one little marker on it, top cylinder. Let's clip this onto a uh, ground somewhere. Hope that's a ground. So hopefully you'll be able to see it light up. I don't know how I'm gonna position it. Yeah, that should do it. Why not, right? All right, well, you get the idea. So while I do that, I'll also do a compression test. Now, when I got this motor, fired it up, didn't have any problems, no rod knocking or anything, but I didn't care about all that. I just wanted it for parts. So let's uh, go ahead and see what happens. Uh, one of the design flaws of this desk is pull starting it. You got to flip the motor around to pull start it. And I don't really feel like doing that, so I'm just going to do it on this angle. Hopefully it uh, works out okay. So, I could see the spark. Hopefully you could too. Give the engine enough turns. And we're at 60 PSI, which... Not bad. Cylinders are dry. Engine's old. I'd look for about 60 to 90. Now if you really want to get those numbers up, you hook it up to a drill, get the thing spinning nice and fast, and it'll shoot up. But anywho. Let's try the bottom cylinder now. See where we're at. Sixty also, and we had spark. So, power head's probably in good condition, and so is the ignition system. But we'll pull it off. Pull off the flywheel, and we'll see if we have any uh, crack coils or anything weird going on inside of there. But at least we know it works. All right, the compressor is powered up, and I always use the impact wrench to pull the flywheel. I'm too old, too tired. And uh, time is too valuable for me to do this by hand, so I don't. I'm using the Evinard puller on this one because I knew where it was. Yeah, I really got to get organized. I need to get a, some type of drawers made up for my father. Hint, hint. It's kind of funny. I wonder if we'll catch that. All right. Pullers tightened down. socket kind of somehow to this impact wrench. I 
we're going to be doing, going and tightening on this one. And it's off. So coils, mind you, I'm no expert. Those look probably 80s. Yeah, maybe even 90s. I don't know, they look pretty nice though. Condensers look new, coils look, well, were new when they were replaced, obviously. But everything in there looks pretty nice. Well, that's kind of handy. This will come in handy for something. Pull the ignition plate off here. First thing we gotta do is pull the uh, spark plug wire clamp off. Looks like a 7 16 Nope, 3 8 So, I'm going to go ahead and set the uh, bolt down in there, just for uh, safekeeping. Alright, to pull the rest of the plate off, we're going to have a clamp inside of here, which is held on by the uh, tiller handle. So, what I'll probably do is rotate the plate up a little bit so I can see what's going on under there. Looks like some kind of little clip. I don't really remember. Hopefully the screwdriver will work on this first try. Why that's rotating is this. So no, don't be alarmed by that. That should about do it. Now let's find this clip. Can't see it over there. Eh. This doesn't look like it's going to be all that easy. It's got a flathead screw up inside of there. There's no way I can get to that. But I can pull this large bolt out up here. I'll show it to you in a second. And that should free the arm enough for me to get it out of there. But even that isn't really a... Uh, a good way to do it. It's just going to be a mess. Right, let's pull it off, see what happens. So my camera died, aka phone. It shut down because it said it overheated. Phone's cold, so I don't know what it's doing, but lost all the footage. So what I did was I pulled out this bolt screw here, then loosened that one. It's just sitting in there right now. That gave me the option to rotate this up. When that happened, I was able to get to the bolt inside of there, and the rest of the plate pulls off. So there's the uh, what the arm looks like there. So this little bolt screw was right inside of there, and it's a flathead. That was fun. Finished getting this plate off. The only thing left is the stop switch. So it has a little tab there, a little tab there. Just bend them up a hair. And the unplug. Now we need to do is fish our plug wires on through there. And our entire plate is off. Now, good measure. Can't see what I'm doing over here. Let me, uh, there we go. Perfect. So I'm going to put that screw back inside that plate. Not an everyday screw, so you don't want to lose it. There we go. So, there's the ignition system off. Next, I'll do the carburetor.